Welcome to Brew and Review with Mike and Jake from Orange Cactus Coffee. Join them as they put coffees and brew methods to the test. Thank you so much for joining us. That is right. We put coffees and brew methods to the test. Today we put Peixoto's sampler pack to the test. So we got three different coffees and we drank them two different ways. Cold in the Hario cold brew bottle and hot on the Hario V60. We really enjoyed them. I think you're going to enjoy this one. Let's go ahead and jump right in. But before we do that, you know what you got to do. You got to play my track. Bring it. All right. Well, let's hear it. Re, re, review, coffee, review. 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 All right, Mike has done primping and prepping, and we are back for Brew and Review 5. I have got so much to do, so much to talk about. Mind is blown. I don't recommend drinking this much coffee in one sitting or this many different coffees in one sitting. But if you're going to do it, do it with friends. We're going to do it anyways. Right? That's so what they say. I got to roll out because like I got to brew this. Mikey, I'm going to just give you the mic and then we'll talk about everything else. The, the, everything else that's sitting in front of us yeah. that we got going. Once you're done, we'll you'll reconvene. Okay. So right. I'll just give yep. a little premise. Set the stage for what we're doing. Jake had ordered, if you've been listening, he's talked about it, I think, on the uh, DRs a few times. Um, the sample pack from Pei Shoto. And with it, he got... Three four ounce samples. So we have a Peru, we've got one from Brazil from their their own farm, and then we've got an Ethiopia. So Jake decided we wanted to compare um, brewing them hot via V60, which we're doing for each one, uh, against um, a cold brew. And we've done that, which we'll talk about at a little more length how we did that in the Hario uh, cold brewer. Does that have a name? Cold brewer? Cold. <laughs> Oh, the Hario cold, cold brew bottle. bottle. There it is, which is uh, a cool little device, and we've been fans of it for a long time. So we have each coffee. We're going to taste uh, the cold brew version and the V60 hot version and, and kind of compare the flavors um, as well as discuss the method that we've used. We've gone ahead for the sake of brevity, time, your time, brewed the first two V60, just got done with that. They're sitting here in front of me. Jake's finishing up the third, and then we will start tasting and discussing now with this message, message method message. Mm, yeah. I was doing so good with you this. Killing, you were really killing it. Can we just pause a moment and, and just admire that you were owning that? I'm out of breath with this uh, approach. Like you've done the rail method. We'll the call rail. it for all three, right? That's, That's all I do. The for single the, pour the V60 now is the rail method. I believe it is. Yeah, and they can't hear you probably. So I'm gonna. Um, say what that is in case you're not familiar it's basically a single pour method first you bloom you agitate you stir the grounds to make sure they're all saturated and then you come at it with the rest of the water um, fill it all the way up and how many what are we doing 20 grams each 20 to 300 uh, 15 to 1 is what i believe that is and then after you fill it up you do a little stir around the edges get anything any uh you know any of those guys that are not wanting to get in the pool you push them in and, uh, and then you get the rail spin, which is essentially kind of like a draining. It, it drains, you know, if you ever notice the V60 has these, um, like, grooves that run down the side. And it kind of gives you a little toilet bowl. Uh, yeah, not a good analogy, but that's what it does um, to the water. And You could oh, also back- call that a vortex. If oh, you'd thank like. you. Yeah, yeah, a little vortex. You call it the, the toilet bowl swirl, which is great. <laughs> it's very you know, appealing, but you could also call it a vortex. Did you get the toilet bowl on that one? Yeah. Definitely rock the toilet bowl. Sure. Uh, and we found that it's a very consistent, easy way to use the V60. Now, you can do three pours if you want. You might get a little more sweeter cup because you might hit uh, the grounds a little more. Uh, if you're good at it, if you're bad at it, you'll get a horrible cup. Or if you miss some of the grounds or you leave some dry spots or like me, which my problem with pouring is sometimes uh, when I get to the outside or the part of the V60 that's away from me, I notice that I'm pouring more water and then when I'm close, you know, to me. And, and I think when, when in the bed, sometimes when I look at the brew bed when I'm done, it's not level and I could see where I was pouring more heavily and where I was pouring lighter. It's looking pretty level. It's looking like wet sand instead of mud. Digging it. 
Yeah, and you're coming in at a perfect time, in, in my opinion, just shy of three minutes, two thirty to three minutes, which will depend upon your your uh, your grinder how how good it is. So, what's that? I just splurged. You just what? Splurged coffee on, my on the back of my neck. Oh, on the table. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Well, good. So we're finishing that up. What do you want to try first, Jake? I think we should try the Ethiopian. Which is the one you just brewed? No, that's I just brewed the Peru right now. The Ethiopian is the one I brewed first, so it should be cool, and it should be sweet, and it should Makes be sense. ready to go. Which is in these mugs here. The fellow The mug. fellow Big Joes, right? Yep. yep, but at the same time, Mike. At the same we've time. Got the cold brew oh. here. So we're going to do side by side. The Ethiopian version. So we're going to do the cold this brew. Flip top bottle. With the Ethiopian this at the same time. So cool. Check I think that it's out. It's pretty cool. It's got a great color. And so I got the Wintersmith ice here. Don't so like the crazy what? noises in the background. That's just my children. Yeah. I don't know if they can hear that. Can they even hear you? You're not in front of a mic, which is not normal. So what we could do, I think, Jake, while I'm tasting this, you should probably sit down and tell them how you made this cold brew yep. and get into that method. And then we can discuss uh, the coffees. Sounds like a plan. All right. <clears throat> Okay. Thank you. I am back. So what are we talking about again? <laughs> the Ethiopian. Tell us the how you made brew. How, you, how do you like the cold brew? I love what do you do the with cold that? brew. This is what I do with it. I take this Hario cold brew bottle. You grind up 55 grams of coffee. You put it in this little device that hangs inside. It's like a, a, a um, plastic cylinder that is frame. It's like a frame cylinder. So you still have... Um, like the walls, right? The walls, it's like a, one of those uh, like infusion plastic filter, water yeah, yeah, infusion yes, bottles. Yes, thank you. Something like and that. And it hangs in there. Infuser. And so you do fifty-five grams of coffee. It is like a coffee infusion bottle, and it hangs in the top. It's very cool. You put seven hundred grams of water in it. I use third wave water for my coffee, and then you let it sit in there between eight and eighteen hours. You know, and yeah. I think all of these were a between eight and twelve, so somewhere somewhere around there. It's it's cold brew. It doesn't have to be rocket science. But then I add a little ice sphere, the Winter Smith's ice sphere in there, nice. which I like. I like the presentation of it, like the way it looks. And I am gonna I'm gonna drink it here. I'm gonna drink it here for you. Are you gonna drink it for him? I'm gonna drink this cold brew for you. Why don't you drink you. that for him? Yeah, watch him drink it. Listen, let your senses. I probably poured too much of this. I, yes, I think we're. This we're going to get highly caffeinated very quickly here. It and I tell people when they try it, I say think of it more like a tea flavor than a coffee flavor, yeah. a traditional mm -hmm. coffee that maybe you grew up with. Exactly, and it's great. Now, to highlight a little bit, if you're not familiar with who Peixoto is, um, Peixoto is a roaster. Are they down in is it Chandler? Chandler, yeah, yeah. Chandler. So I want to say they're in Chandler, Arizona. Um, they're somebody we've been to their shop a couple times and always been treated very graciously. And the awesomely. owners and the crew there, uh, yeah, they're excellent. They're they're one of the most uh, memorable experience we've had. Kind of early on in our journey, we sat down at the brew bar and we were trying to contain ourselves. It was great. We were like little kids. It was really great. But I'm sure they've experienced that because there's not much. There's not much out that way. Um, but there's more now. But anyway, this is a family. Owned all the way from the farm to... Um, uh, farm in Brazil, not Ethiopia. Sorry, we're just drinking the Ethiopian. They don't have a farm in Ethiopia. They have a farm in Brazil. Yeah, their familia, their family farm is in Brazil. Yeah. And I think they've been doing that for a long time. And their daughter, I want to say Julia, right? Was, I believe so. Wanted yeah. to uh, say, hey, we need to uh, deliver this, uh, control it all the way to the front. Yeah. And deliver amazing coffee to people in a cafe and sell roasted beans and, and wanted to visualize or conceptualize it beyond just the farming that she grew yeah. up with. I love it. I could be a little bit off, but I think that's the general idea. And they've done amazing work. Uh, they really have. Uh, I think they've won a couple, was it the Golden Bean? They, I think they have won some Golden Beans. Some golden Beans. Spencer, they're one of their roasters down there. Spence uh, Dog. He does an excellent job. Yeah. They do a really good job. So what are your thoughts on this Ethiopian? Are you getting any of the lemon peach or honey from it, from your Hario V60 hot brew or your Hario cold brew bottle cold brew? 
Oh, <laughs> that's a lot of words, but <laughs> sorry. The second thing that I do is I, that's not that I one. twice filter you double the, filter the cold brew because it comes out. It comes out with a lot of silt, with a lot of, it comes out grimy. Now, if you like grimy coffee, if you like a little bit of mud in the bottom, then God bless you. You don't need you to do filter you. it no more. You, you do. do you. But you if like you like it a little, little bit? cleaner, yeah, if you don't like to chew your coffee, if you like it a little bit cleaner, I recommend running it through a paper filter. So I still, I use the Bonavita, this immersion dripper right here. I use that guy because I can, it's big. You can fill it up big time. You, I guess you could use the clever as well. You just need to use something where you can get a paper filter. Or a V60. In or a V60. It just doesn't fit. You can't fill it up yeah. as much and just walk away, yeah. which is what I do with the Bonavita. So I pre wet. That's a Melita, I think, number two filter. Um, I pre wet that puppy and then I just throw all of that cold brew from the bottle in there and then. It just drip it right into one of these little flip top bottles and you're you're good to go. Nice. Now maybe you mentioned this and I wasn't listening. What kind of grind setting do you like to use? Uh I for you know, I use the same. I did the exact same grind setting for the Hario V sixty and the Hario brew bottle. So you keep I, it fairly f- medium, more on the finer side. Medium to fine. A couple now, of clicks past medium some towards folks fine. Like to use a French press setting for the cold like brew. A traditional coarser. I setting. wanted to see if I got uh, uh, maybe some sweeter flavor notes from the finer setting. I can't really tell the difference. You haven't tasted it yet. Brew. I'm still working on the hot. Yeah. See, I think I, I want the design was for you to go back and forth. Yeah, I'm getting there. Yeah, I I was uh, I wanted to. It's uh, it's very good. I'm really yeah. enjoying this. Right, we're drinking the Ethiopia. The Ethiopian has got lemon, peach, and honey. Peach and honey. Yes. I'm what about getting... the lemon? Um, I'm not sure yet. <sighs> this cold brew is amazing. Uh, the difference. Yeah. I mean, because oftentimes, at least in our journey, I was told that cold brew is a, a lesser um, efficient way of extraction, meaning you're not going to get a nice clear cup. You're not going to get these mm-hmm. single origin properties Flavors. that yep. you're used to. It's all going to taste the same. It's going to be muddled. It's going to be like chocolate. It's When you started doing this and doing the double filter, yeah. it changed my mind. Yeah. It blew my mind because yeah. it is an amazing, fruity, floral, light, crisp, you still enjoyable, yeah. refreshing cold brew. It's it, it's like drinking a refreshing iced tea, mm-hmm. It's it, it, but with more. It's a more complex. It's dangerous. Tea. Yeah. It really is. This is very, this is very good. I, I was stumbling over my words. I'm getting more lemon, I think, from the cold than the hot. I'm feeling like I wasn't getting any lemon from the hot. I was getting lemon. I, uh, the peach is stronger in the cold brew, but the honey is more pronounced in the hot brew. Yeah, it's very good. Very smooth, very sweet. You know, it, this is going to be great. Now, one thing we would like, we should do sometimes yeah. is compare the cold brew to the iced, where we brew it hot and immediately ice it. I think we should do that as well. We should actually do like use the, the different versions, the hyper chiller and the Japanese style. Maybe, maybe another time. Maybe another time. Maybe just later today. Maybe when we cut this one off, we can film another one and drink more coffee because uh, I got more coffee. Well, summer's upon us, so it might not be a bad idea. Exactly. And that was kind of my one I wanted to surprise you. And because the sample pack from Peixoto, 20 bucks right here. This is like 21 bucks for three four ounce bags. Mm-hmm. And you can do a little bit more with that four ounce bag. If you get a sampler that's two ounces, that's all your coffee gone on cold brew. You don't get to try it any other way. But if you get a three or four ounce bag, now you can use two ounces for your cold brew. And now you got one or two other ounces to play with, get some of the other, trying to dial it in a little bit, if that's something that you're interested in. But because summer is coming up, of course, it's always summer out here in Arizona, but wherever you are, it might be summer eventually this year, and you want to have something on or hand. Springish. You want to have something enough. on hand. And that's what I wanted for the missus as well, because sometimes I can't always be there to make coffee. But I, if I make cold brew and I have it in there, she can always have some available to her. There you are. Always thinking of others. Yep. So get a little spark. Whether it's water for yourself here. or for somebody else, uh, it's definitely something you should, especially if you haven't tried 
experimenting with cold brew. It's it's fun. So are we going to move to the next? And you know what? It's not that expensive. You have the this the Hario V60, the plastic one that I love using, is like five seven bucks. The bottle is like thirty bucks. It's true, you need some other stuff, but you're not going to break the bank. It's not like you have to go buy a toddy and make you know five gallons or you know what I mean. You can make just enough for you to have a good time with. Yeah, I really so like this. On. This Ethiopian's great. I think Ethiopia is probably one of my favorite, if not the favorite regions. Let's, let's move on to Peixoto's own farm. That's the Brazil. That's going to be the Brazil. It's but gonna, it's their honey processed. It's their honey processed. And we've got them in Ooh, our, um, whatever these, the decent espresso mm-hmm. glasses, the clear glasses here. All right. Oh, you didn't finish your cold brew. I can't. That's why I, I was, lo- yeah, the logistics. Oh, you were of stalling. How, what you are were we stalling. supposed Am I supposed to down it? That's what I did. Hmm. Okay. That's what all the cool kids are doing. They're down in their cold brew. And yes, there might be slight cross contamination with the cube, but whatever. Yeah. Whatever. It's not going to be that much. Deal with it. I just love that sweet golden color that is there. I just, and what I really like about cold brew. What do you like, Jake? Tell me. I, I like the fact that it's just as versatile as regular coffee, I find. So if you, if versatile. you want, yeah. Like, if like uh, we've got our different flavor profiles, like right? Skills? The King Cup and the Saguaro. Yes, it's got nunchuck skills, computer hacking skills, because girls only want cold brew that have great skills. That makes sense. Never thought of it that way. Good analogy. You're always good with those. Uh, always good with the words. So. What that means is that you can have, if you like a little cream and sugar, you can do that. You like a little vanilla, you like a little chocolate, you want a little something for your protein shake that you're going to blend up or whatever. You want a little Mm -hmm. just more pick-me-up, but you want something cool, you want a different, you can just do different things with it. So that is that. All right. Peixoto honey. Peixoto honey. So that's this guy. It smells so terrific. It does. It does. And I think I remember reading, they were talking about they're starting. This is fairly new. And I think because of, you know, their cafe and all this, this new focus, they're doing micro lots, new experimental lots, trying new things on the farm. You know, they haven't before. And uh, this is white grape, date and milk chocolate. It's a honey process. Single uh, cat to eye, I believe you say cat to. Is that what they say? Cat to Kai. I don't know if you say the C, though. I don't know. Cat to just say it faster and mumble it, and you'll be oh, fine. like I normally talk. Yeah, when I get going fast and mumble, good with you. And oh, I can do that with uh, Faz Fazenda Sao Jose yeah. de Boa Vista. Man, you are really killing it. That, wasn't that too was bad. great. That was great. Might not be right. Have you tasted this yet? Not yet. The I was hot cleansing the palate the hot with this, okay. the yes. seltzer. I already cleansed my palate. Oh, you want me to do the hot? I'm, I tried the hot first. Let's try the hot. Oh, it smells pretty good. Whoa, that is uh, dramatically different. A dramatically different than the Ethiopian. Yeah, that was. Pretty... I I won. You what? I don't know. It's just it's so different. I wonder if I brewed it well. You, the first thing that came to mind was like, "Wow, I think you <laughs> messed. I think you messed the brew up on this one, bro." Because <laughs> the, which the is... flavor profile is so different. I, I don't, don't know. know what if, is date though. Let's talk about date for a minute here. Well, a date is a sweet fruit that's right that's dried, like kind of like a prune, like a raisin eaten, prunish, like thing? a raisin prunish type like, thing. Only it's bigger, bigger, it's a big, and it's a it's bigger the raisin. Thing, prune? I don't know if you remember, but in Indiana Jones and the last was it uh, the Raiders of the Lost Ark, the monkey was killed by a poisoned date. I don't know if you remember that or not. Nope. And then. You know, um, his his uh, Indy's homie says bad dates, so it was a bad date, and it it no. killed it killed that monkey. I don't think he brewed it bad. I think it just was so dramatic at first. You're like, oh, what's what's going on here? It, it's well because it's deeper notes: white grape, date, and milk chocolate. Yeah. I'm getting more a lot more earthiness, and I wasn't yeah. expecting that from exactly. the honey. I was yeah. expecting strawberries, and I got I don't know. But I think that's Not. fitting for some because honey is kind of a mix between a full, you know, yeah. um, natural and a washed. You know, it's kind of dependent. There's different honeys. And even I get them confused at times. You know, you got the black honey, the red honey, the brown honey. Yeah. You got your dog honey. You yes, I do have a dog honey. 
Speaking of which, that dog brought some nasty thing in yesterday. She was <laughs> chewing on something. She comes in all guilty, and she spits it out. And I'm like, Hans, what is this nasty piece of? I don't even know what it was. Was it like part of a bird? It was you no, know, like it left was over like back fur. Half of there was oh. fur on it. Like well, it was a dead mouse or something. She was chewing on. It was disgusting. Sorry. Back to um. Are you looking up dates? What no, I was gonna. Up? I was gonna go. I want to pull this coffee real quick. Looking on Peixoto's site here, <clears throat> see if they give us a little more information, so we can give you information. I'm gonna dip into the cold brew here. Yeah, while let's you're doing do that. that. I cleansed. I cleansed. I think. Let's see what we got here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I. I'm not really caring that much for it. Here it is, Peixoto honey. I, I'm. It's almost a little vegetative. Like maybe. I messed up here on my brew methods. Are you getting this any ca- vegetable okay. or no? I'm not sure yet. Oh, okay. With a similar lineage Perfect. to our popular familia peixoto natural process, this coffee yeah. is produced using pulped natural honey process for mm-hmm. the first time on the peixoto family farm. Picked late into harvest when the cherries were at an extremely high sugar content, floated uh-huh. in a washing system to remove any overly ripe cherries and pass through a depulper to gently remove the cherry skin. This coffee was then sun-dried. The combination of the honey process in this year's unusually cold harvest season Mm -hmm. resulted in a slower rate of fermentation and the development of more delicate flavor notes. In the cup, this coffee has a vibrant and exceptionally clean flavor profile with some great sweetness, and we have come to love that we have come to love from our family coffees. And then they say they're tasting the crisp notes of white grape, pear, Tangerine followed with a sweetness that reminds us of dates, caramel, and milk chocolate. Hmm. So there you go. A little bit about it. I'm drinking it. I just. Oh, are you? Yeah, I'm drinking. Are you? Are, it. you, are you tasting it though? You're not just. You're not just letting it go right down. You're letting it. Uh, what do you think? I d- I'm. I'm not feeling it. I really loved the Ethiopian, but maybe drinking too many coffees in one sitting could be impacting my palate or affecting me but you've only had one uh when you said in one sitting oh okay in this sitting yes maybe you sat over there and drank something i don't know yes i did but i don't know it it could potentially yes if it's not like your first of the day yeah it's probably i'm just gonna say it's not my favorite it's not my favorite it's not quite as enjoyable i don't think to me it's not quite as clean it's i don't know i don't know how to explain it yeah, it's not it's not as crisp as I would have thought. The flavors aren't as pronounced. It's not a bad cup though. Um, I'm not sure I would. I get a little bit of an aftertaste that I'm not real happy with, and I'm I would say, well, maybe I would get rid of it in an immersion style brewer, but the cold brew is pretty immersed. Yeah, I would suggest, and it's still there with this brew on the V60 that we'd have to go a little bit finer and try and draw out the extraction a little bit more. Maybe a little lighter. Maybe a little lighter ratio as well. No, I no? just think the extraction. If I were to guess anything, you know, if I were based on your brew, I was like, okay, let's try this and see if it changes the profile. I think we need to go a little bit finer. I like the cold brew better. Um, I think. Yeah. I think maybe it's the mouth feel. Maybe it's super juicy. Maybe it's because I feel like it's on the top of the mouth. You know what I mean? Towards like the gusher? top of the palate, like a gush. Exactly, like a gusher. Like, if you were going to have, not a fruit gusher, though, kind of like an earth gusher is what I'm feeling, like a chocolate gusher. Yeah, I'm with you on that. I see what you're saying. I'm getting more chocolate gusher than fruit it's gusher. It's got good sweetness. It's not dry. No, no, no. It's leaving a good coating of sweet savoriness. But it is different, and it's dramatic. And maybe it was just a little palate shock. I don't know. But, but I did the... I did the um, Seltzer water. Yeah, but that doesn't erase the last, most recent, you know, thought of coffee, right? Your brain's still grabbing on to flavors that you just had. Um, it just cleans your palate to not influence the next sip. All right. Well, so, moving on. Yeah, I think so. I think it's time to move because people are probably getting bored. I don't know if any, anybody is still watching, but if you're still watching, thank you. Here's to if you. If you're still listening, thank you. Here's to you. Well, we're on to the next, and that is the Peru. The Peruvian the Peru. coffee. The Peru. Wow. Single origin, Catura and Barbone. Washed. Cardamom, lemon, and vanilla. I love cardamom. Cardamom. And I love vanilla. And 
I do like lemon as well. Yeah, when it's uh, used uh, selectively at the right time, the right place. So Jake is going to serve up some of that. Oh, I got to finish. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow, yeah. that was a, a loud Yeah, clunk loud there. clunk. Sorry about that. Long pause. All the things we try to avoid. Yes. Nailed it. Yeah, I, could, I thought about having different glasses, but then it's like we have three different mugs each, and then three different glasses each. It's but I made enough cubes. Good job. It's pretty clean. It's not, it's not impacting it. At least I can't tell. Thank you. Thank you, Jack. Appreciate it. So these were, okay, when did you, one of the things that Peixoto want to highlight, and maybe you already know this, is when you order from them, a lot of times it ships same day, next day. It ships same day. Yeah, it's crazy. They do an amazing job. And, and right now, at least currently, free shipping. It, uh, they kill it so with crazy. the free shipping. It's so crazy. And uh, but, it's something we've wanted to do, but yeah. we just struggle with, but they do it. They do it. They and just it's pull cool. the trigger on it. So and hats it off came in a branded, bo a, a branded box. Oh, yeah. I moved it. So the, the white box with the pay shuttle stamped on it, open it up, and it's got uh, the packing list stuck to the inside, kind of like on a, as a sticker, so you kind of know exactly what you got. No, I didn't put anything on the back. Yeah, that is Peixoto, and a little handwritten note where they said, thanks, Jacob, for your order. So it was very cool. It is cool. I love me some Peixoto. The only, you know, and I don't even know if it's a drawback. A year ago, I would have said it was a drawback. Now I just, it's just what they do, but you're not going to get as many deep notes from them. You know how like we have um, it, it, I mean, it's a more modern third wave coffee, all of it. Lighter roast. Yeah. You're yeah. not going to get a, Floral, a, fruity. A, a dark roast, but you know, that, that page, that honey, I would al say almost wants a little, wants a little be. cream and sugar. It yeah. wants to get shaken up into a little, you know, yeah, a uh, little, a little fit in. that cold brew wants a little, uh, half and half might play nice. raw sugar it, it might, and yeah, a little with organic vanilla extract. So we're drinking not only the cold brew out of these, you know, Libby glasses with the Wintersmith ice sphere, but also these last little mugs that we're using here are um, our mug mug glasses. Mug, so mug. I just want to thank everyone that ordered a mug mug yeah. mug. They are gone. They're all gone. Is there one more? There, I think there's one more. There's so one if you more, look, there may be one more. On the site, it's pretty it, much, I think it says it's all gone. I, I should I say one. Update. Okay, did you update it? Tried to. If you updated it, then it might be. By the time you see but, this, it's it's either so updated these, or these mug gone. mugs are. And what was the name of the gentleman that made these for us? Gil. Gil, fantastic. Yeah, thank great. you. Gil. Great experience. Thank you. Another coffee lover. Uh, home roasts on a be more. So and home makes on a pottery wheel. And home makes. Home, home makes. Home bakes. Home makes. Home makes. Yeah. Home makes. Makes them at home. Makes them at home. Yeah, that's home make. I don't know if he's at home when he makes them. But. Gil, are you at home when you make these, or do you have like a studio? Every time I think of pottery, though, I think of the Mister Brown, Mister whatever the the Kevin Costner serial killer movie, where he's got this this kiln, I don't know, this pottery no. kiln that he fires stuff up, but he disposes of like bodies. You always in there. think of these, and then yeah, that along with yeah. it rubs the lotion. On it its rubs skin. the lotion on its skin, <laughs> or else it gets the hose again. Yes, it randomly comes up from Dude. you a lot too. Do you think that I have a, maybe I've got a problem or? Yes. Oh, huh. no, that's known. We don't need to go into that now. So what are you getting in the it's Peruvian another podcast. here? What are you getting in the Peruvian? Uh, I'm, I'm drinking the hot from the mug mug and it's very good. First uh, sip was very sweet and more of a deeper fruit. And a zing. Do you get a zing at you the end? You got a zing? I got a little zing you at the end. lucky dog. I love it. I love it. What are the flavor notes? I'm getting lemon zinger. I feel like I'm getting lemon zinger. We're going off script on this one. You're going to have to tell me before I... Okay. Even okay. I think I already read them. This is what I'm getting. I'm getting a lemon zinger aftertaste. It's a lemon zinger. But in the middle, I feel like I'm getting like a like a pear or mm. a cherry. Like a cherry. Deep, like a deep cherry and a yeah. lemon zinger aftertaste. That's I what I cherry. get. I say deep cherry and lemon zinger. Deep cherry. Lemon zinger. Give me something to grab. What do you mean? Ooh, like well, what? Like the What's little lemon, like the, the uh, acidity, tartness. Um, you know, the Something lemon zinger is a hostess. It's a lemon zinger. Oh, it is. It's, yeah, it's a candy. 
It's a not a candy. It's a, it's a candy. It's a mass produced baked good that's terrible for you. Oh, so it's like a, it's uh, like a it's made in it's the like Twinkie a sweet fat. dessert. Yes, yes, yes. Mm. I'm with you. Yeah, so that's uh, that's pretty good. I think um, I think you're right. I'm not getting quite the lemon zinger. It's it's an aftertaste. It's right here at the end. It's right. Yeah. It's like at the ow. I didn't, I didn't really get that, but let's see. So they say, <coughs> perfect. That's exactly what they said. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Peixoto. I'm good. Oh yeah, that's right. I did forget, but we did read cardamom, lemon, and vanilla. So yeah, you're right on. Mm, okay, the cardamom, but not much. Nothing for the berry. And I will. I don't admit, t- I do. I, I don't know if I'm getting any vanilla. Uh, what about mouthfeel? What about in like the silky? Hmm. Maybe it's a mouthfeel. Well, cardamom, I didn't know what it was, or I didn't remember. So we went upstairs before this, or we were upstairs, and we got the spice out and smelled it. Yeah, rubbed Thanks, it on the gums. That, mm-hmm. Yep. That right? Is that what you do? I I don't know if the people were ready for that, buddy. Ready for what? To hear about you rubbing spices on your gums. <laughs> we were prepping. <laughs> we just wanted to be able to accurately convey what cardamom tastes like. And just once, we and don't want to look like idiots. Just once. Failed. And cardamom tastes like cardamom, surprisingly enough. But I'm not getting cardamom. I don't think mm-hmm. I'm getting cardamom. I'm getting an excellent cup that I'm enjoying. Yeah. Right? And that's all that matters. Yeah, I'm getting they didn't like say cherry. deep cherry, though. I'm getting a cherryish. Uh, to me, cherry. that's a deep cherry, a, like one of those, like, like not deep purple, like, like the, the Bing, band, like the those Bing cherries. You know, some of them are like light red, and then some of them are that dark, dark red. It's like a dark like red a plum cherry. cherry, like a plum cherry. Like I don't a, know. I don't know the difference between a plum and a Bing, but like a deep cherry. If I could, can I just throw that on there? Deep cherry. Yeah, I like it. Sounds good. Well, let's see. I'm pulling it up now. If your internet would ever work. Wow. I think the kids are Netflixing. That's probably the oh, problem. Netflix and chill. Yeah. All right. So here's what they say about. They're watching like Troll Hunter. I think they watch Troll Hunter. Have you ever heard of that? Peru. Not a, actually, I have heard of it. I haven't seen it though. Yeah, me neither. Our first among the Peru. It's the most quality yeah. driven coffee we've ever had from that origin or this origin or the I believe origin. It. I believe the family Colonche have yep. been producing coffee on their family farm for over 15 years and historically have developed it, uh-huh. uh, delivered it to a local co-op. Yeah. The father of the family always enjoys experimenting and perfecting his process. He got to the point where he felt all his hard work was getting lost by being mixed with the rest of the co-op. Gotcha. Y'all, y'all don't care as much as I do. Right. I'm done with this. Like here, I, I'm, I'm putting my great coffee in with these bums. Exactly. I uh, can relate. Knowing this brought them to the decision to break away from the co-op and start producing their own micro lots. Uh-huh. This harvet, it, harvest is the first of these micro lots that have ever been made Man, I'm on it. Have ever made it to the U.S. You're killing it. <laughs> we are extremely excited to have the opportunity to roast and share it. All right. So it says here, we're in awe every time we taste this coffee. And they say it's incredibly clean with notes of cardamom, cinnamon, lemon, rosehip, brown sugar, and vanilla. It's tea-like body and soft acidity that let the aromatic shine while the sweetness carries on I like, into I the think finish. The brown sugar. And what was the other thing? Rose hips. They said, yeah, I think rose that's, hips. Prob- that's probably the deep cherry I'm getting. Rose hip. That, that rose hip and brown sugar. It's kind of at the front of the mouth. And then as it transitions. We got any more of that? Yeah, we've got some well, more. I'm, I don't know. Water. If, here you go. Here, let me just you got fill that? it up for yeah, you. Yeah. Just reach. As it transitions from the front of the mouth to the back of the mouth, I feel like I get a little lemon zinger on the way out. Mm-hmm. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. It's very good. I would agree. I think that this crop is a standout. I've never <laughs> had a a uh, why? That's so funny. I heard a different word when you said crop. That's of course all. you did. Of course. You probably thought about some horror movie about somebody being decapitated at some point, and you wanted to. Uh, anyway, I think um, I don't know if I've ever had Peru, so I, it's excellent. It's really good. Yeah. Are you drinking the cold yet? Yeah, I've had both. Oh, you've had both. What do you yeah. like more? Um, I both equally. Yeah. Hmm. You like both equally? Yeah, it's very good. It is very good. I'm getting I, almost identical flavor profiles from the hot and the cold. It is pretty it tastes, close. It's like tastes the same. Oh, really? 
Yeah. I wonder if it's the same coffee. It could be. Oh, it might be. It could be the same coffee. But right, I mean, if, when people say the cold brew, oh, it kills the flavors, this, that, and the other thing, it's not the not true. Not it's, true. It's not the brew. This tastes delicious. Yeah, it does. Delish. Yeah, I'm getting the vanilla and the rose hip. And the cardamom, I don't know. Maybe. I need to go get a little more. Yeah, rub a little more cardamom <laughs> on your gums there. Uh, this is very good. I, I agree with you. I don't think there's one that I would pick over the other. Now, with the Ethiopian, I think I enjoyed the cold brew a little bit more for some reason. I don't know. They were both good cups. Yeah. Um, for the honey? With the No, with the Ethiopian. Oh, yeah. Sorry. I thought you were transitioning. Sorry. I was oh, hoping yeah, you transitioned you were, to the honey. Oh, God. I thought you were summarizing. No. No, but my mistake. Not. You were transitionizing. I was transitionizing. Transitionizing. Yeah. Transition. Moving it, it along. Is. Yep. Stop camping there. And then for the honey, yeah, it was um, my least favorite. Uh, I think we could experiment with the brew a little bit on it. Um, but I think you're right. It is a good candidate for um, additives. If you like a little cream, a little sugar, yeah. or if maybe you want to use it um, in like a chocolate brew workout, something like that. I don't know. Maybe you could experiment. It might mm-hmm. suit itself, lend itself to that. I know that's probably not what they want to hear. It's not necessarily yeah. designed for that. Um and then the Peru, uh, I thought was excellent as well. Um, my second favorite behind the Ethiopian. Yeah, agreed, agreed on every on on all counts. What would you? Are we grading cactuses, cacti for each coffee or for each brew method, or what are we doing here? Well, I think in general, I would just like to say I, I think Peixoto is is right up there, four and a half, five cactus. They deliver. Not every coffee they're going to roast or produce is going to be my favorite. It's just not. Everyone's palate's different. Yeah. I think you won't go wrong with them as a company, as a roaster. They deliver the wow. And so for that, I, I think there's five cactus. They I agree. really are. They're outstanding. And I think the sampler pack is a great deal. It's fun. I it's, think it is. if you got, because 20 bucks, you telling me you ain't got 20 bucks to go on a little flavor journey? Come on now. And they give you enough coffee in each sample pack to experiment with brew methods. Mm-hmm. So I still got some coffee left here. Look at that. Yeah, look at that. How exciting. I still got coffee left. So I think did a cold brew, did a hot brew. I can do a French press or an arrow press. I could do whatever I want. Yeah, buddy, you can do whatever you want. I can do whatever I want. Don't worry. (laughs) Well, it felt like that. It felt like people were saying that. And for the method um, of the cold brew using the Hario cold brew bottle, I give that a really high rating as well. Yeah, Um, I think that was excellent. I'm surprised every time we use it how great the flavors are. So four and a half. Four and Killing half. it. What would what would be what would make it five? Oh, if me, you did, if you didn't have to twice filter it, double filter you it. You know that could be. Yeah, if there was a way that it automatically did that, or if there was a bigger version as well, I think that would be cool. I see. If there was yeah. a, if this you know it was seven hundred fifty milliliters, like a wine bottle size. Y- you do seven hundred of water in there. Of water. Yeah. Third you do wave 700, water. Third wave water. Seven hundred milliliters. Yeah, I'd yeah. like a little bigger one. Yeah, I think would be nice. But uh, yeah, other than that, it's it's an awesome method. So. Thanks for all this prep work you've done, Jake. Yeah, my pleasure. Thanks for spending money on uh, this wonderful coffee. My pleasure. And thank you for joining us. We hope you got something out of it. If you have any questions, any suggestions, or... Email Mike. Comments? Yeah, not me. Yeah, email. (laughs) Put it down below on the video. That's right. And I will respond. Perfect. Hopefully. Yeah, eventually. Eventually. All right. Within due time. Until next time. Try cold brew. Yes, indeed. Try the cold brew. And the movie that I was thinking of was Mr. Brooks with Kevin Costner. That's what it is. You can check the show notes at orangecactuscoffee.com forward slash brew review five. That's a tongue twister and it's one word. And this is brew review five. What would you like to see us do next? Let me know in the show comments. Are you tired of it just as a podcast or you want it only on YouTube? Let me know as well. Peace out. Catch you next time.